Good morning, everybody. As you can see in the background, we picked up another Alice Chalmers 5020 with a loader. Uh, we're gonna end up selling our other one just because we don't need two of them. But I wanted to go over a few things to look at when buying a tractor because there's a lot of you that are watching this channel that are starting your own farm. And I don't want you to be misled, nor do I want you to waste money on equipment. So we're gonna go over a few things after I unload this. The biggest thing is, is you got options. And we're gonna go into that on like how to buy a tractor, where to buy a tractor, all these different things. All of them are, none of them are necessarily the best option or the worst option. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. So we'll go over that here shortly. By the way, while I got your attention, please smash that subscribe button or the like button or both. Especially if you appreciate the videos we're putting out. Some of the things that I wanted to talk about are things that you don't necessarily think about when you're purchasing a tractor. So I'm just gonna give you some examples of things to look at and go over, just so you kind of have an idea for two things. One, if the tractor was maintained well, or two, if it's in disrepair and it's gonna cost you a lot of money to fix things. So one of the first things I wanna show you is very simple, and you can do it with just about basically well actually you can do it with a jack if it's got a front end loader you can do it like i did lift the front tires off the ground you put one hand up here at the top at the 12 o'clock position and one down here at the six o'clock position and now i'm going to push towards the tractor with it right back and forth lightly i can tell that i have a little bit of wheel bearing play not bad but bad enough that i want to check it out and it may actually not be in the wheel bearing, it might actually be in these lug nuts because I'm looking right here around the lug nuts and just by pushing back and forth on the bottom of the tire, I can see that the lug nuts aren't moving. They're actually pretty still. The uh, bearing actually doesn't seem to be the issue. It seems like maybe my lug nuts either aren't tight or they're the wrong ones and they're actually not holding the tire on correctly. Either one needs to be addressed. So I will check that. The same thing I just did on this tire, you do the exact same on the other. For steering, you can do this to check, but I can see right now that any movement from this tire, oops, any movement I do with this tire is directly connected to that steering linkage right there. So that's good, that's what we want. The other things that you wanna look at, right? So if I look in here, I can see there's plenty of grease in there. And it looks like it's been greased often. So it's not that it hasn't been, if it's dry as a bone around all these grease points, that concerns me because that means that this pin in here is probably gonna have to be replaced. This pin here, all this does is actually hold the loader on. If I wanted to take it off, I take this out, pop this off, and then all I do, this pin right here will slide, this one right here will slide all the way out. And then I will essentially set the loader back down on the ground. It has arms right here, so I can set it on the ground. It's a quick attach. Other things that I wanna check. So while I've got it up in the air, what I wanna check, right? I'm gonna look, I'm not gonna crawl underneath because it's hydraulics that are holding it up. I don't wanna go under there and see if the hydraulics are gonna fail. I wanna look from out here. So what I can see, there's grease around here. That's good. That means that they've greased things. Same thing right here on the steering linkage. There's grease that I can see coming out a little bit. The grease is a little bit older, but it's there, and that's good. So I continue to look at all this, no leaks that are visible, that's good. It's exactly what you're wanting to see. Now, if there was a leak, now I wanna see where that leak comes from. So on this one, for instance, this tractor didn't come with power steering from the factory. The individual that owned it before me wanted power steering for the loader because it was difficult to turn 
which is not a problem. I, you know, it probably is difficult to turn with weight on the front. So what they did was they got an aftermarket one, they put it on. What they did that I wouldn't agree with is I can look right here and I can see that this is clearly rubbing against my fuel lines. Now it's rubber, which, you know, that's good. But if I look underneath it here, I can see that it rubbed for a while because it has black marks and it also has, oops, I got the magnet stuck. Sorry. It also has a, um, a rub point. Now it's not leaking. It doesn't seem so that's good, but something that I'm going to look into farther. The other thing that I'm going to look into, all right, back here leaking again, any leaks up here by the engine is not what you want for a lot of multiple of reasons, right? Up here, I have belts that are running components. So it runs my uh, alternator and my power steering pump. I don't want the belt to have oil on it because it won't grip the pulleys like it should and it won't turn any of the components like it should. I don't want oil over here or fuel or anything of that nature for the simple fact that if I'm leaking something over here, the engine's never going to get hot enough or should never get hot enough to catch on fire. But on the other side, which we'll go back to now, it's very possible it can leak on the exhaust and that exhaust can get hot enough to start, you know, the oil or fuel or whatever it is that's leaking on it can get hot enough that it's going to start smoking. Obviously smoke means there's fire or the fire is, is very close to happening. So again, just things to look at. Um, I can also see on here, right? The services, the guy that actually I bought it from, he was pretty good about services. Um, I didn't get to talk to him before I bought it though, but it was serviced at 1400 hours. We're at 1455. So again, reasonable. Now, Components to, to, so this tractor was stored inside, so it wouldn't matter so much. But if the tractor was stored outside, this boot right here is preventing water from entering the transmission. Or in this case, this is actually my transmission and my hydraulic reservoir. Don't want water in there. You don't want water in any, any oils, but I'm sure you all can figure that part out. You're seeing all these water spots because last night the tractor sat on my truck overnight. It did get rained on last night and it snowed a little bit. But the other thing that is really going to make or break you is fluid levels, right? So if I open this up, dang, that's on there tight. I don't remember tightening that tight. If I open this up, right, this is the fill port. So I'm not checking levels right here, but I can open this up and I can look around in there and I can see, all right, it looks pretty clean. The oil, yeah, the, the oil is not bad, but... Right now I can't see a whole lot because the tractor's at a pretty good angle. So most of this oil is leaning back into the diff back here. But I like it like that because I can see the case. So inside the case or even under this cap, if moisture has been entering or moisture was prevalent in the system, it'll make, uh, it'll look like um, almost like a white fungus growing. And you'll see it inside of here. You might see it on the bottom of the, of the cap. I don't see any of that and that's good. The oil, Again, I seen when they changed it last, so I wasn't too concerned, but I'll still look at it. You know, it's not super full. It's not super runny. It's black, but most diesel oil ends up getting black pretty quick. All right. The other thing I want to look at, my fuel filters, right? There's no hour marking on that, but the guy that owned it, he actually told me that he usually just changed all the filters because it's a $3.00 and some odd scent filter because he got some sort of discount when he buys so many of them. So he changed both of these at the same time. The other thing I'm looking at, right? Repairs that have been done, right? I can see right here that there is gasket maker there. This tractor was made in the eighties. So I know it's been taken apart, but that gasket maker actually looks a little bit more, uh, newer than say the last five years. I'm saying for sure. So something to ask the owner about if you have that opportunity. Uh, gauges, right? Make sure your hour meter works, the tachometer works, because that's important for keeping track of anything and everything that you have um, for service records and engine maintenance. So if you're buying a tractor that has gear driven uh, transmission, not like hydrostatic, 
It's gonna have a clutch on it, obviously. So what I noticed about this clutch is the owner said that he replaced it and he put a new clutch in it, which he probably did, I don't doubt that. But I noticed that the clutch is very soft and it doesn't really disengage until right about here. But I also noticed that I can make this, uh, this rod, I can extend it by simply taking this pin out, rotating this until it, thread, it screws off the shaft a little bit, and then put this lock nut back against it. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Sorry about that. I had a phone call from my grandma. I called her this morning and she was busy getting ready. My cousin's taking her to go get her hair done. So, uh, waiting for her to call back and she just called. So, back to what we were talking about. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> both sides obviously looking at, so like with this having a loader, I'm checking, looking at the lines. These hydraulic lines, they're holding currently, but as you can see, the rubber coating is off right there so I can see the stainless steel braiding. It's starting to dry rot here, here, so these are things that I'm taking into consideration of what I may or may not want to pay for this tractor. I've got quick neck fittings, good. So, like I said, we're mentioning these because we don't want to pay a bunch of money for something that we're gonna have to make repairs on. Now, when it comes to negotiating, that is something you have to really make, uh, you kinda have to think about it on your own. What's valuable to you? So for me, I'd rather get something cheaper and do the repairs myself for a multitude of reasons. One, if I have somebody else repair it, um, let's say that, hey, you know, I'll buy this tractor, but you gotta replace all these lines. They're probably gonna buy the cheapest lines they can find and stuff like that, which I don't blame them, I got it. They don't wanna cut into their profit. But I'm looking at it from my point of view of it's far easier for me just to replace the lines and I'm going to buy lines that in my opinion are better quality and will last longer hopefully. The other thing, right, if there's actual repairs that need to be made. So let's say that, uh, you know, I need some, some engine work done. You know, it's leaking oil somewhere or some gaskets need to replace. Same concept. They might take it to somebody that doesn't do uh, work that I would consider quality work. So I might do that myself as well. Uh, just giving you ideas. I'm not calling anybody dumb, nor am I trying to insult anybody. It's just things to think about because whenever you're looking at something, you may not be thinking about all these different things. So it's just something to help you make a checklist. So once I kind of negotiate or go over the tractor and figure out what things are wrong, I'm gonna negotiate. And like I said, you're gonna have to make a decision of what is a good price for you, depending on what you have to do to it because at the end of the day, the value of a tractor, I could sit here and I could tell you that this is a $35,000 tractor. And maybe in my, my mind it is. But let's say in your mind, no, I'm saying it's like a $3,000 tractor, right? It's always, value is always in the, uh, the buyer's hands. So if you have a buyer that just really loves these model tractors or something, then you might be able to get a premium price for it but it also may work against you because they know what it's worth as far as like, oh, well, I know it's hard to get these parts or expensive for these parts. So just things to think about. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about on tractors, right? So go over it thoroughly and make sure that you're checking and see what's going on with it, right? If you see something that you're not sure about, so like these bearings, for instance, on this, this wheel, I know that those bearings are gonna cost me somewhere around 50 to 60 dollars because those bearings aren't made anymore uh, well not by alice chalmers they don't have them in stock anymore because they don't make small tractors like this they actually contracted out somebody else to make this tractor well that other company doesn't make them anymore either so i have to get a custom bearing from napa so they do cost more so again it's a cost that i expect to incur and that i understand so these are the other things that you have to think about too now, as far as where you're gonna buy this tractor from, okay? I actually bought this one on auction time. Now, I'm not sponsored by anybody. This farm is 100% non-sponsored by anything or anyone. But if WD-40 or All-American Clothing or Agco are looking for, looking for somebody to sponsor, give me a holly. 
I'm, I'm interested. But like I said, I won't sponsor anybody or anything that I don't feel is worth it or that I don't feel like I can stand behind and say, yes, this is a good product. Auction time is a pretty good service. It's basically an online auction. There's multiple of them. There's auction time, there's purple wave, there's big iron auctions. There is another one that I can't think of right now. But you have all these different options. And then overall, it's, it's a good way to buy a tractor and you could get it for really cheap. Um, you could also, it, it could make the price go higher because it's nationwide sales. So now you have, instead of just the area that you live in, you know, say a thousand or two thousand, three thousand people are interested in something. Now you have a hundred thousand people that might be interested in something. So it might raise your prices up. But like I said, you go on there, it's kind of nice. You can set your maximum bid and leave it be. So when the auction starts, like I set my maximum bid at the end, right before the auction or shortly before the auction ended, because I didn't want to set mine right off the bat and the price just get jacked up real quick. I like to wait till the end so I can also see where it's at because if it's already over whatever my bid is gonna be, I'm not gonna waste my time. So you got that, that's a pretty good tool, honestly. The downside to it is you're not necessarily gonna get to see the tractor. Now this tractor was three hours away from where we live. I didn't have time because of work and everything else to go see it prior to purchasing it. Now you can call the company that has it there or if it's an individual listed, you can try to get a hold of them. But what we've learned whenever we've been on there is nobody wants to really give you a firm answer. So multiple times I asked uh, about, hey, does this work? Does that work? Oh, well, you know, uh, I don't know for sure, but I want to say it did whenever I operated it last. But you really need to come look at the tractor in person if that's what, if you're interested in it. And I get it. They're trying to cover themselves so that I don't come back and say, well, no, you told me this worked. I understand that. So just kind of understand that concept. Um, the upside to the auction time is, like I said, you could get a very good price because maybe nobody else is really looking at that tractor or it's ending on a day that most people aren't on the auction side or ending at a time that's in your benefit. That could be good. Personally, I really, I truly like to buy from an individual. I like to buy from a pri private seller because I get to go there and I actually get to go to their place and see it. Now, you might ask, why, what's the benefit in going to their place? If I go to their place and I see that they have, you know, junk, uh, you know, let's say old implements that just don't work anymore, just laying around, that starts to make me think that either A, they don't take care of things and they just kind of junk them whenever they're done with it, or B, they don't do any sort of uh, repairs. So like, if something's broke, screw it, I'll get a different one. So you gotta kind of have to look at that and gauge the individual. You might have an individual that um, you know, like the, whatever it was, was just old and they just didn't want to bother with it anymore and they decided to go buy a new one. I understand that too. But it helps you give an idea of, of how well they maintain things when you see their farm or their house and stuff like that. It kind of gives you a little bit of a feeling of, of what to expect. The other thing is, is that, um, let's say that I buy it and, uh, you know, I have questions about something, right? The previous owner, I could call back and say, hey, you know, the tractor is doing this, has it done it before, and if so, did you do this, that, or the other to fix it, right? It gives you a little bit of background about the tractor because you're not gonna be able to think about all the questions you need to ask right then, right there on the spot about what you might encounter later on. So that's that's the biggest reason that I like private sellers. Plus the cheap, uh, the cheapness in me really wants to say that private individuals, I'm gonna get a better deal than if I go to a dealership. A dealership has to make money. They have overhead, right? My farm, I'm not making money off of whatever I sell, right? I would like to get at least some of my money back or all of it if I can, but at the end of it, I'm getting my, uh, getting a, a amount of money back to put towards whatever I'm gonna buy next for it. So it's helpful for me. But in a business, like a dealership, right? They're making money off your trade and they're making money off of whatever you're buying. They also have a lot of overhead. They have a business, they have a shop probably that they work on vehicles in. They have employees, they have uh, buildings to maintain. They have money into something because they take something out on trade but they're gonna fix all these things. Now, they're not gonna pay for those things to fix. They're, they're making that money off of the individual that traded in because they're gonna, hey, you know, I can't give you that much because this is wrong with it, this is how much it's gonna cost me to fix it. When in reality, we know that the prices are very high at a dealership for them to fix stuff. And then, 
you got you that come along that, well, I want to buy this tractor. Well, I can't sell it for less than this because I've put this much money into it. So now they've got more money from you. They got less money from the individual traded in. They're making their money. If you're buying new, they are within reason, obviously, they can't drop the price to so low because they'll lose money. And then whoever actually owns that tractor, so Alice Chalmers or John Deere or Matt Ferguson, whoever you got, they're not going to give their tractor away and they're not going to take a loss on it. And I don't blame them. So there's just things that I, you know, I want you to think about and I really want to help. If you have questions about other stuff um, as far as what to look at or how to look at it, please um, give me a comment down below and I can make a, a smaller video and may, uh, maybe a more detailed video. I'm not going to go too much into details right now because I don't want to insult anybody on the channel. And it's simple for you just to simply reach out and ask me questions and I can answer them. Uh, or maybe I can point you in the right direction with a uh, reply video. So, thank you for tuning in this week. I appreciate you all watching and, and I hope you're enjoying the videos, I do. Um, I'm gonna mention one of the persons that seems to watch all of our videos and she comments on every one it seems, or very close to it. Jackie Green. I really, uh, I don't know how to put it other than I, it motivates me when I see people comment on the videos and say that they appreciate this or they appreciate that or hey, you're doing great things. It really, it, it helps me to see and be like, you know, maybe this is reaching somebody and maybe this is helping somebody. Ultimately, I wanna reach, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people around the world. Our channel is very small and it may grow, it may not, I, I don't know. But even if I'm just impacting one person, that makes me and my family feel pretty good about the content that we put on here for you. So again, if you like the video, please hit that like button, comment down below with any questions, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content.